Today we're going to have a look at how we do substitution in mathematics. So let's begin. Now you might remember that variables in an expression are simply unknown values and we use letters or symbols to represent these variables. However, there are times where we want to know what the whole expression equals when our variables are a certain value. And this is where substitution comes in. When we're given the values of our variables, we can simply substitute or replace the variable within our expression with the value that we've been given. For example, I want you to consider the expression 2a plus 3b. What is the value of the expression when a equals 6 and b equals 5? Now what the question's done here is it's given us a set value for each unknown, but it wants us to identify what the whole expression would equal. Well to find that out, what we need to do is rewrite the expression but every time we see an A, we replace it or substitute it with a 6. And every time that we see a B, we replace or substitute it with a 5. But when we're doing substitution, I recommend you always substitute the value with brackets around it. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's start writing the expression. Now my expression is 2a, and I want to replace that a with 6. But if I simply write 6 down right now, it's going to look like 26. But 2a means 2 times a. 2 times 6 is 12. That's very different from 26. So I recommend that you substitute our 6 with brackets around it. So that way you remember to go 2 times 6. Then we continue. It's plus 3, and I've come across my b. Now my b is equal to 5, so I replace my b with 5. Now you've replaced the values, the next step is just to evaluate it. So 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15, so it's plus 15, then 12 plus 15 is 27. Therefore when a equals 6 and b equals 5, that expression equals 27. Let's take a look at another couple of examples. Here, I've been given two expressions that contain the unknowns of x and y. And I've been asked to evaluate them or find out what they equal when x equals negative three and y equals five. Now remember, our first step is to rewrite the expression by replacing the x value, wherever we see it, with negative three, remember to include those brackets, plus, the y value of 5, and once we've done that, we evaluate it. So this is 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12, plus 3 times 5, which is 15, subtract 1. Now negative 12 plus 15 will get us to positive 3, positive 3 subtract 1 will be positive 2, so our answer is equal to 2. In our next problem, we do the same thing. We write down the expression, but wherever we come across our unknown, we put in brackets, replace the value or substitute the value that we've been given, and we continue writing the expression. So subtract 2, we've got the unknown of x, which is negative 3, and the unknown of y, which is 5, like this. Now we've done that step, the most common mistake that I see people do is forget our bed mass rules. Now our bed mass rules say we need to evaluate brackets first. Now in our first term, we don't actually have anything inside of our brackets to evaluate, so I'm gonna leave that just for the moment. However, in our second term, we've got this negative two times negative three times five. So let's evaluate that. Negative two times negative three is gonna be positive six. Positive six times five is gonna be positive 30. So we're gonna add on 30 at the end. Now the next step of bed mass is to evaluate any exponents. Now we do have the exponent of negative three squared. 
Now negative three squared means negative three times negative three. Negative three times negative three is gonna be a positive number and it's gonna be positive nine. So this equals to five times nine when we evaluate the exponent, then add on our 30 at the end. Now five times nine is 45 plus our 30. Then finally, that's equal to 75. Now whilst it's good practice to evaluate these problems by hand and in your head, I highly recommend that you always check your answer via a calculator. So that way, you're double checking to make sure what you did is correct. Now when we start substituting values, there will be times that you're given an equation and you're asked to complete a table such as the one I've got here. Now the equation I've been given is y equals 3x plus 1. And what the table's asking me to do is, what is this y value when x is equal to negative 2? What is this y value when x is equal to negative 1? What is this y value when x is equal to 0? And what is this y value when x is equal to 1? Well, let's start using substitution when x is equal to negative 2. And I'm going to do some working out just underneath. Now y equals 3, I've just found an x, need to substitute or replace it with negative 2 plus 1. Now our y is going to equal 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6, plus 1, which is going to be negative 5. So y is equal to negative 5 when x is negative 2. But what about when x is negative 1? Well, we do the same process. We continue writing the statement till we come across that x. We replace the x with negative 1 and we continue writing the statement. Now y here is going to equal 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3, plus 1, which will be negative 2. So when x is negative 1, y will equal negative 2. What about when x is 0? Well, it's going to be y equals 3 times x, we substitute it with 0, plus our 1. Therefore, y is going to equal 3 times 0, which is 0, plus 1, which is 1. So, 1 goes here. Finally, what does y equal when x is equal to 1? Well, y equals 3 times x, which is 1, plus our 1. Now, y is equal to 3 times 1, which is 3, plus our 1, which is 4. So, y is equal to 4. So what we've learned here is we can substitute our values for our variables into statements. When we substitute, that's the same as saying replacing. So now it's your turn to have a go at substituting. I'd like for you to have a go at these couple of questions for yourself.